Just today, Alison Tiemann, a comic book creator and founder of the Honey Badger Brigade, was ejected along with other members of the brigade without cause or explanation from the Calgary Comic Expo. But this article in A Voice for Men has the background here. With 97,000 attendees last year, this year's Calgary Comic Expo, billed as the second largest in Canada and the fourth largest in North America, should have been a blast for all the guests, exhibitors, and visitors. For one group promoting comic books and free expression, though, the trip turned into a humiliating nightmare through no fault of their own. Eight members of the women's creative artistic group, the Honey Badger Brigade, once located in space BF3821 at the Expo, had their exhibitor's booth shut down by security just before the doors opened to the public on Friday, April 17th, the second day of the four-day exposition. They were then summarily ejected from the premises along with Allison's husband and Anna's companion. Ten ejections in all. One leader of the cooperative group, comic producer Allison Tymon, was also blacklisted permanently from attending similar comic expositions across Canada, effectively destroying her ability to promote her art. Their crime? Allison politely answered a question during a panel discussion. But, um that's just that we're, we're, what had happened? What, what, at what point did all of a sudden did, did it become a dirty thing for women to be into this stuff? Like in the eyes of so many of these men's rights activist types or... Would you like us to field that question? Huh? Would you like us to field that yeah, question? Sure, go for it. Because I am a men's rights activist, so you can, okay. you can hate on me. The reason why I don't like feminism is because you promote this idea that women are defined by being victims. If you look at the context of all of your issues, men also face considerable problems as well. And they need to be brought into the story, and not just for men's sake, because this hides men's vulnerability, also for the sake of challenging the notion that women are defined as victims. So it's pretty clear that Tymon and the Honey Badger Brigade were run out of the expo after Tymon asked to and was granted permission to respond to a comment made about men's rights activists where she identified as a men's rights activist, stated she didn't like feminism due to its emphasis on portraying women as victims and its failure to see men have problems and are vulnerable too. Also, the Honey Badger booth, with its shout out to Gamergate, apparently didn't go unnoticed either. Blacklisted. What a very appropriate word. Now that's about as much as I will summarize what happened. The Voice for Men article and Google Hangout discussion and other videos linked in the description bar will give you all the background and detail you will need. But then you don't need much because we've seen this all before and not just the recent machinations of social justice warriors and latter-day feminists who use victim politics as a cloak, one that's wearing thin, to harass and do damage to people who beg to differ. And this isn't to end with one article, one tweet, one video, because we've seen this recently, and we've seen this a long time ago. As an American, I tend to use American frames of reference, like the House Un-American Activities Committee and the sick, sad spectacle of Senator Joe McCarthy and the Red Scare. Other countries, and not just in the English-speaking world, have their own touchstones for moral panics, witch hunts, and the suppression of dissent, many far, far worse in depth and scale than the McCarthy era in America. But the way they violate fundamental rights is all the same. The Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedoms and the American Bill of Rights may be worded differently, but they are in subtext the same document. The American Bill of Rights bestows rights on no one, because to the way of thinking of the post-enlightenment minds that wrote it, governments, and I would say this of any organization, cannot bestow rights on anyone. They can as these rights are assumed to be innate and unalterable. They are woven into the very fabric of human existence. 
A person has these rights not conditionally, not by staying in the good graces of the powerful, not by adhering to a set of beliefs or observances of any religion or ideology. A person has these rights simply by being. The Bill of Rights is the law, but the spirit of this law is found in the Declaration of Independence. The McCarthy era and all the minor moral panics that came before and unfortunately after should be anathema to anyone who can read and understand and internalize the sentiments in the Declaration and the Bill of Rights. That someone could have their life, liberty, and happiness curtailed on the basis of political beliefs or the lack thereof, or not being properly obedient to some flash-in-the-pan moral panic that presumes wrongly to supersede the innate rights that not just all citizens, but all human beings have. Well, that should be repellent, deeply, to one's core. Under the Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedoms, everyone has the following fundamental freedoms. Freedom of conscience and religion, freedom of thought, belief, opinion, and expression, including freedom of the press and other media of communication. Freedom of peaceful assembly and freedom of association. Here I'm addressing the Star Chamber organizers of the Calgary Comic Expo who decided that the Honey Badger Brigade infiltrated the Expo and decided the appropriate punishment for Alison Tymon speaking her mind was to be ejected and banned from the Expo and all future gatherings along with her associates. And I'm speaking to the security staff who responded without investigation to the claim that Tiemann was being disruptive in giving a calm, reasoned, and heartfelt response to a question slighting men's rights activists, and I'm addressing the cowardly people who took to Twitter to distort and lie about Alison Tiemann's comments and the mindless Me Too drones who brigaded on the basis of lies and smug ideological superiority. I'm not going to deal with the organizers' particulars in all this, as everything coming from the Calgary Comic Expo is loaded with nonsensical language that amounts to pure propaganda, such as the idea that Tymon infiltrated the Comic Expo. Infiltrated? Alison Tymon is a comic creator. What other credentials does she need? Or is the implication that she failed to pass an ideological background check, which, come to think of it, would be on the Expo, not on Timon or the Honey Badger Brigade. Rather, let me ask those who participated in this act of oppression, stifling, and bullying. Are you proud of yourselves? Hello, everybody. My name is Allison Timon. I am the writer and artist for Xenospora, and I'm also the person who had the original idea for Honey Badger Radio. Um, as you probably know by now, I've been banned not just from Calgary Expo, but from all of the events the organizers put on across Canada. Um, well, there's been a lot of conflicting stories on why I've been banned. Uh, the story that we got when we were at the booth and told to leave was that we had been um, harassing panelists um, when I was talking at Women Into Comics. Um, as I put up the recording that we did, um, and you can judge for yourself if we were harassing. And I've recently, a while back, I received it. You know, we, we've had seen all kinds of tweets about us, about the Honey Badger Brigade as a group, and one of them, in particular, was uh, they they look really mannish. They look like men, they look very masculine from a feminist. All of us in the brigade have a tendency towards wanting to assume a position of strength and stewardship of other people's vulnerabilities, in this case men's. And that's part of our identity as women, and that's very atypical, because you're really supposed to be the damsel, the victim, as a woman. You're really supposed to say, I'm oppressed by men. And how can you possibly be in a position of helping men's vulnerabilities if you're oppressed by them? And this is something that I think all of us in the brigade just don't identify with as women, which makes us very atypical. I registered the booth under my comic because I wasn't sure if I was I, I do both, so I wasn't sure if I would would put Honey Badger forward or Xenospora forward, 
until we got so much overwhelming support to bring us to the convention by the people involved in Gamergate and the men's rights communities. And I, I'm drawn to men's rights because I want to be able to help and protect someone. And, you know, I am, I'm bisexual, but predominantly I tend to have relationships with men. I, specifically, I've been married to my husband for about 17 years. And I want that feeling that I can protect him and he can protect me. So I've always been drawn to that, that, that expression of strength. And for me, men's rights is the ability to express strength and to be strong for someone else and to steward, to be, to take responsibility for another group's vulnerabilities, men's vulnerabilities. And I don't want that to be separate from being a woman or being feminine. I, I really don't want that to be gender atypical, but to, yesterday I realized how fucking gender atypical that apparently is. Women like me, women who are not, who don't present as damsels, we don't believe in damseling, and we don't believe in the ideologies based on damseling, are obviously not wanted, our voices are not wanted in a Women Into Comics panel. Like, we're not wanted there. You obviously believe that you have freedom of thought, belief, opinion, and expression, but that those rights of yours don't extend to Alison Tymon and the Honey Badger Brigade. You obviously believe that you have freedom of peaceful assembly and freedom of association, but that these rights don't extend to the likes of Alison Tymon and the Honey Badger Brigade. And yes, I could point out that this heavy-handed oppression was carried out by a comic book convention, but that's exactly where some people's expression and happiness is found and also where some people insist on injecting their narrow, intolerant, and exclusionary ideologies. And as far as your freedom of conscience, I really have to ask, how is your conscience right about now? Well, about now, I assume you're okay with it all, with your lies and distortions, with your oppression of thought and speech, of association, of conscience, including your own. But that's within your in-group, where you're still patting each other on the back, not for doing anything good or right, but for flexing your muscle to bully and oppress another human being. Don't kid yourself. People in groups like yours do all sorts of horrible things. Witch burnings, gang rapes, lynchings, mob violence, where the fetid air of groupthink can blow out the weak little pilot light of each individual's humanity. No, I mean, when the expo is done, when you go your separate ways and make your last venal tweet for the night, and you're there lying with nothing but the darkness and your own thoughts, might you hear this little voice creep in? But, but you have done enough. Have you no sense of decency, sir? At long last, have you left no sense of decency? When you are alone with your own thoughts, do you ever let your very own little voice of humanity, of decency, to creep in? Probably not. Which is, to me, a measure of just how far gone you are, and also how little respect you are due. <laughs>